Hey everybody, this is Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong, and I have a supply journal that is going into the shop in just a few minutes. There is really no logical explanation for a journal getting this huge, except that I really wanted to make something fabulous and really tactile and full of beautiful things. This was therapeutic for me, and it is also a way to share some beautiful fabric that I have put up. So I want to show you, I had to back my camera up to be able to get this in frame, and I hope that you can see everything. This is going to be mailed out priority mail, obviously, because of the weight and because of the size. Is this not just gorgeous? Look at all this beautiful, beautiful stuff. It is a book, a fabric book, that is not so big when all of the supplies are taken out. So once you use the supplies inside here, you're going to be left with a gorgeous fabric book that you can continue to store things in, or you can leave this like it is. I mean, if, if I were getting this, I would just have to sit and look at it for a while before I took anything out of it. The other thing is that you can cut this whole thing up. You can cut, cut it apart. It, it is meant to be used. It's meant to be loved and used. So let me see if I can show you the outside of this glorious book without messing anything up because I have things neatly placed so that you can see it. Right now it's so full you can't really see how it would look if it was laying completely flat. But you can see all of these beautiful beads that have been sewn around the front. This really pretty charm. I think this must have been on a bracelet because of the um, attachment mechanisms on the back. I just sewed it into place and all of these can be cut off. Now, once you cut one off, several are going to come off, and then you could tie a knot in the end of the thread. Or you could just leave them. There's a lot more in here to be used. Again, every page is fabric. There are a lot, a lot of supplies in here. Again, there are beads that have been sewn to the edge here. This beautiful bird. And we have three rolls of fabric here. And some of these fabric pieces are very large. They're really nice upholstery or tapestry style fabrics. And then some of them are vintage lace and vintage embroidery. This is a very large piece. Isn't that beautiful? I just wanted every page to be a feast for your eyes. I felt like I needed this. I love my job away from home but when I get home sometimes I like to just sit and make things. I'm surrounded all day by inspiration and it feels really good to get home and just be quiet and make something. This trim is sewn into place with a sewing machine so I don't know that I would remove that. There is a kind of a broken, you can see two of the stones are missing, but that was a, uh, a pen, a lady's pen for a blouse. And here we have a safety pin and a pretty charm, another safety pin and an elephant charm that I made. And this fabric is just pinned into place. This little embroidery piece is just clipped into place with a um, bulldog clip. I think that's what they're called. And then there's a pretty little piece of fabric. Again, you could cut this whole thing up, but I think you're probably going to have enough supplies in here to not have to cut it up. There's a piece of cotton lace in the center. This charm has been sewn into place with quite a bit of embroidery thread. I put more of this pom-pom trim in the center so that you will have plenty to use and that way you don't have to cut this. This is a pretty little bag from a local coffee store, Cocoa and Cinnamon, and it is full of, well not full, but it has a lot of these little pearl colored beads. They're just inexpensive beads that came from a necklace. But there are some vintage metal buttons in here as well. Five buttons. And I didn't 
didn't sew this into place, I thought you might want to use this. So what I did was just use a large safety pin. And I know I've mentioned before, I love safety pins and I love kilt pins. Then in here, we have this beautiful little vintage baby dress. I just couldn't cut it up. I mean, it can be cut up. It's I don't think it's going to be worn. Things like this get so threadbare that they, you know, they tear easily when they're worn. I know that my oldest son, Daniel, I had his picture taken in a christening gown that had belonged to his grandmother. And she was born in, I believe it was 1918. And this was his paternal grandmother. So the christening gown was... 70 years old by the time he used it and he was kicking like a newborn baby does and it did rip the bottom of the christening gown and I still have it we still have that gown somewhere put up even with the rip in it I need to take it out and look at it so this page you just see this, the beautiful pockets and here is a large piece of bright fabric this reminded me of Hawaii this beautiful tropical looking print. So pretty. I'm not going to take out every single piece of fabric. A lot of the pieces are large like this. You have more buttons. This trim is just pinned into place. There's another elephant charm. And then up here we have just sewn on kind of, you know, with not much thread. This large vintage button. And then there is a piece from a handmade scarf with this pretty trim. And that is just, you could take the button off and this will come off as well. Then on this page, this kilt pen is holding on a little fabric booklet that's got four sample cards. I love all of these colors. Really pretty. And again, that is just pinned into place. All of this is meant to be used. Just please be careful with the pens. I don't want anybody to get stuck. I love using these. There's a vintage button, and these are again some of the pearl looking beads that are sewn in all the way around. There are about four or five, maybe it's four, little pieces from this fabric of a map, this world map fabric, piece of gold fabric. Here's a beautiful large piece of upholstery fabric, and then just a couple of little pieces of really pretty satiny fabric. This came from a kimono. I love this dragonfly print. I'm going to be sad when it's all gone. And then, let's see, I don't think I missed anything. Just lots of pretty trim. When you flip over here, these are three pieces that are just sewn at the top. You could definitely cut, cut part of these off and use them, and it'll still leave you a piece of pretty trim. This trim and this pretty rose, those are just pinned into place. There's some really soft burlap there. Mushroom charm has been sewn into place, and this is some beautiful fabric from an Indian garment. Here's another large piece of upholstery fabric. That's just a little pin. Oh, and you can see the sparkly fabric behind that, behind that blue. We're gonna see that again. This looks like a lantern, and that's just a little pin that hooks on with that kind of back. On this page, we have this really pretty silk fabric with the design, another kilt pin and a bead, some pretty uh, embroidered, that might be machine done, but that's from a table scarf. And then again, this machine embroidered piece, very loosely woven. Those are in place with safety pins. And then we have some of this really pretty purple trim that's just laying there in the center. Here's another beautiful page there's another safety pin with a bead and some vintage lace. These two pieces are sewn into place, but then we have this pretty piece with the bright blue, this little piece of a cotton fabric with some machine embroidery. These are only pinned into place and folded inside of this one is this little peacock feather bead. And I did pin this closed so that hopefully it won't fall out. More beautiful fabric. I will sh pull this piece out and show you how large it is. Really pretty. That looks so old world. And then over here we have 
two more pieces of fabric. That's another large piece and some vintage lace just laying there in the center. On this page, we've got some vintage lace laying in the center, and this is sort of a charm page. We've got all of these charms across the top. I did try my best to knot the thread between each one so that hopefully you can cut off one bead at a time and not have things just fall apart. Again, one or two or three may come loose. Here's a pretty piece of beautiful fabric. That's put in with a large hat pin, and I put the cork on the end so that you don't get stuck. There's a couple of beads here. And just be careful, I don't want anyone to get hurt. This piece of fabric is stitched with the beads. And then here we've got, that's another little, like a brooch pin. And there's a large hat pin stuck into that. Look at the little um, B on that. Isn't that pretty? And then we have a charm of the Eiffel Tower. So again, please don't get stuck. I would feel terrible. We've got this fabric with the African animals. Here we have more pockets. And this is gorgeous. This came from a small Indian garment. This was the beautiful work on the front. I think this might have been a child's garment because it was a small, small size dress, but just beautiful. Let's put that back in that way so it's pretty and we see all that across there. And then just some embroidered trim. Here we have another pocket. I thought this was so pretty and I have to tell you I'm always drawn to zebras because when my first son was two and a half I gave birth to my second son. Then when my second son was three I gave birth to my third son and of course for three years the the middle boy Joseph had been the baby and after the baby, baby John, had been home for a few days, Joseph came and announced to me that he was henceforth a baby zebra. And I think he was realizing he wasn't the baby anymore, but he still wanted to be some kind of baby, so he became baby zebra. I don't know why he chose that for himself, but now whenever I see zebras, all I can think about is my sweet little Joseph. Such a sweet, sweet child. So there you're getting some zebras and some baby zebras. Pretty fabric. And that fabric feels waxed. I bet you could wash that and it would come out. Or you can use it the way it is. It's really, it's really a neat finish. So, and there's the elephant on the other side of that fabric. This beaded trim is sewn into place. And here we have this beautiful piece of fabric that's got the two flowers and then it showed here some ways that this had been used. Cranston Prince. So let's put that back in. Love all of this pink. Isn't that beautiful? This trim is just laying in here. I'm sure you can figure out something to do with that. We have a large clip here and a small clip here and you will see why on the next page. There's more of this fabric. So when we get over here, I've just clipped in a few images that made me really, really happy. And underneath is this heavy board from an old, I think this came from a photograph, like a, those heavy cardboard things that photographs were put in, and I love to use those to punch tags out of. So we've got this piece of wallpaper and a piece of scrapbook paper, this really pretty doll face, I just loved this. These dried flowers in this little paper cone. I wanted to put in some things to inspire you. Let's clip that back onto that page. And underneath it's just fabric. It's just a flat page of fabric. No um, pockets or anything. So maybe you can see that fabric under there. And then we have the dragonflies and the bees. More beautiful scrapbook paper. That is a gorgeous piece of wallpaper. It's got the nicest finish on it. I will have to show you this word. I didn't realize that qualifiedness was a word. Qualifiedness. And then we have a couple of pages of botanical images. And I love that. These bottles are covered in paper. Looks like really, really fine paper. Really pretty. Again, I wanted to inspire you. And this is a collaged uh, bathroom trash can that was done with paper. There's a pretty page, and so that is just to inspire you to create. So going to the next page, oh, this might be my favorite. 
this gorgeous charm is um, totally sewn into place. Isn't that beautiful? It had these little holes across the top and the bottom. So I stitched that into place one night when we were watching something on Netflix. And then there are beautiful pieces of fabric in here. I just, again, wanted to create something that was a feast for the eyes. There's a beautiful botanical fabric. And this, let me show you this. This has some butterflies. It was hemmed across the top and the side. It might have been a curtain panel or something. But look at the print and the butterfly and the elephant. That's just beautiful. So let's put this back in. Maybe we can get that pretty butterfly to be on top. Yep. And then this page, there's just more fabric. We've got this. This beautiful gold. There are three pieces of this silk that's got this beautiful, beautiful stitching in it. And then this large, really pretty sheer fabric. Don't know how old it is. It's, it's kind of delicate, but look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? This piece of fabric here a sheer piece of that botanical fabric. So you can see there's another kilt pin here. You've got clips. And then when we close it, you can see the back, just this beautiful fabric, and there's that leaf. So this book is absolutely completely packed. I mean, this would be pretty just to, just to display. You can see how beautiful it is all of the different textiles, the different colors, the pins. So this is going into the shop and it is gonna be a little bit pricey just because of the work that's gone into it and all of the supplies. This is a lot of supplies and it would be really expensive to go out and buy all of this new. I do feel like my prices are good prices. Anytime I get a good price on something, I try to just pass that along. This one does have work involved, and again, it's part of my business, so I truly appreciate everyone's support, more than I can even tell you. So this is going into the shop, and hopefully this will go to someone who just wants to hold this and soak it all up and then use it all. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.